This tutorial will show you how to make this super cute kelp forest watercolor greeting card. Here are some materials you'll need. You can pause here and check out the links below. So first let's get our working space all set up. Use some masking tape to secure your watercolor paper to the surface. Get a little bowl of clean water, your paint brush, and paints ready. For this tutorial I used my custom handmade fine paints available on my Etsy store at www.saltysoul.art. I used the ocean palette because we're painting pretty ocean colors. And I used a handful of colors from the kelp palette to make some kind of shiny little ornamental decorations and accents on the kelp forest watercolor. Of course you can use any paints you have. Um, these are just the paints I used. And I also used a piece of watercolor paper that was about six inches by four and a half inches. So that would, it would fit nicely on a greeting card. Um, it's about the size of a postcard. So wetting all my paints so that they're ready, I'm going to take a dark blue and starting at the bottom, which is gonna be the darkest color at the bottom of the ocean, going to apply a kind of a light wash, um, blending in the colors so they're somewhat uniform and working my way up. Make sure to wet your brush so that you can apply more color and so that your pa paper stays wet. You can take more color, this dark blue, and apply some shadows towards either side of the paper working your way in, making sure to keep your paper wet and your brush wet. Now we're going to use some of this turquoise in the ocean palette, it's called sandbar and it's one of my favorite colors because it's so vibrant um, and so colorful. And starting at about the middle of the page we're going to apply some of this turquoise and starting to really curve and work our way up and coming back down and blending it with the darker blue. There's really no wrong way to do this. Use your creativity if you want to make your highlights a little bit different or use more turquoise, that's completely fine. And so now we're just going to take a clean, wet brush and start to blend in some of this turquoise, creating this lighter space at the very top. This is where the light shines down into the ocean. And so taking a wet brush, blending, you can use a paper towel to take off some excess water and just keep working down and blend until you're happy with how the blending looks. So now going back down to the bottom, I'm going to take some darker blue. Um, this is an ultramarine base called uh, Deep Reef on the, in the ocean palette. And I'm going to create some of the ocean floor. And so these are kind of like, uh, imagine you're making mountain ranges with a little valley in the middle. Um, you don't want it to be perfect lines straight across, um, but kind of making little ridges and sloping down towards the middle of zigzagging and overlapping. You can use a wet brush, a uh, clean brush, to kind of bring and pick up some of that paint and blend the ridges a bit better and these will be kind of like the, the reef on the bottom of the ocean. So you can see this is pretty simple. What we're doing is creating our background of the kelp forest. We're gonna go ahead and let this dry when we're happy with it. Um, but you know, this is a really cute greeting card. If you want to, you can create this into a painting as well. So once you're done with this step, you want to let uh, your paper completely dry. You can fan it or step away and make a cup of tea. And when it's completely dry, we'll come back and create the kelp forest. Okay, so I sped up a little bit. And here we're going to start creating the kelp forest. And so we're going to use a green, kind of olive green color 
This is also on the Ocean palette. It's called Estuary. And we're going to start from the bottom and create these nice wispy strokes. And from the main kind of stem of the kelp, we're going to create these offshoot branches that kind of sway in a similar direction uh, to simulate the waves and the current moving the kelp forest. And so we created this one kelp over to the left. We'll create another one over to the right of the page, kind of bringing it up and wisping across, creating more wispies. I think that's a word. Bringing it up and kind of creating these little cute offshoot branches of the kelp. Here you can mix some greens with a little bit of dark blue. You can have some variation in the tones and colors of the kelp, individual kelp strands going up. I started on the left and then I'm making these kelp strands on the right. The important thing is that the kelp branches and some of the offshoot branches are kind of swaying to uh, simulate the kelp moving in the currents of the water. I added a little bit of blue to the green I had on the brush and started to create this kind of kelp strand coming up right in the middle of the page and flowing off to the left with the current and kind of merging with the other kelp. It's good to have some color variation. It gives the painting kind of a sense of depth that this kelp strand is like closer and that it's kind of disappearing as it gets closer to the surface of the water where it's very light and white up there. You can go over some of the kelp strands if you want with different shades of blue or darker green to give the kelp more definition. I'm creating this kelp in the front uh, to be more dark um, to kind of give that appearance of, of depth and creating these kind of little kelp offshoots that are coming down to the very bottom of the page like it's right in front of you and merging those with some of the background. Really, you can put kelp strands anywhere. Uh, this is just where I chose to put them, um, but there's really no wrong way to do this. Kind of lighter kelp strands in the background and some darker ones are going over them twice in the front. I took a little bit more blue and started creating this a kelp strand coming up over on actually on top of a kelp that we painted in the beginning um, and that gives a really good sense of depth um, to the ocean scene. You just want to make sure that the kelp uh, strand that you painted earlier is completely dry before you paint over it. That way the watercolors don't bleed into each other and uh, the kelps each individual is very de defined. Painting a couple of these darker color, darker blue kelp strands starting at the very bottom of the painting and working your way up really give this illusion of depth and you should really start to see the kelp forest starting to come alive in your painting now. You'll also notice that these darker kelp strands started at the very bottom but didn't quite make it all the way up like the other kelp strands. And this kind of helps with that flow and illusion of the surface of the water. Okay, so now's the fun part. We're gonna take some of these really shimmery mica-based pigments. Um, they're watercolors, they're available um, in my Etsy store, but these are from the kelp palette, and so this is a color called Sculpin. It's um, kind of Sculpin like the fish, but kelp also has 
these kind of nodules and areas of browns and so we're going to treat the kelp like a Christmas tree and we're going to use these shimmery pigments to create accents in this kelp scene and use Sculpin to create some of the nodules on the kelp and different accents, kind of like a, the kelp was a Christmas tree and these are its ornaments. And so when you're working with mica shimmery based pigments, um, it's really good to kind of get a really thick consistency and get a lot of color in there. And so what I'm doing is creating these little nodules on the kelp kind of randomly. And these are those, those little kind of pockets of air that keep the kelp afloat. You see them on the beach when you're walking. They're really fun to kind of stomp on and pop. Um, and so we're going to use the shimmery sculpin bronze color um, to create little nodules. And these nodules are typically at kind of the junction of where the main branch breaks off into these sub branches and little branches and so we're going to kind of create these little nodules they're very tiny little circles they're kind of like ornaments on a tree and just work your way around the painting and create little nodules everywhere of these really pretty bronzy colors So now I'm going to do the same thing, uh, just switching colors to this really pretty shimmery yellow. This is Horn Shark in the Kelp palette. And I'm going to create more nodules along the junctions of the kelp. So just kind of randomly place these little nodules along the kelp, alternating between the bronze and the yellow. If you have different mica shimmery watercolors, you can use similar colors to create these accents. There's really no wrong way to do this. You can't really see the shimmery in the video, but at the you should be able to see it when you're using these, these uh, colors. They're really pretty and when you kind of move um, your eyes along the paper, they change different tones and kind of sparkle. If you want to create a handful of these greeting cards, you can kind of get an assembly line going, you know, painting the background on five at a time, letting them dry, then working on the kelp forest. They'll all be a little bit different and unique, and I'm sure people that you send these cards to will really appreciate that. You can also use this tutorial to not create a greeting card, but maybe just a pretty watercolor painting of a kelp forest. Um, or you can make a bigger kelp forest using a bigger piece of watercolor paper. So now I'm going to take some of this really pretty orange, it's one of my favorite colors, it's called Garibaldi, and we're going to use it to create a little Garibaldi fish in the background because what kelp forest isn't complete without these really bright, cute colored fish 
in the ocean or hiding behind strands of kelp. And oftentimes you can see these Garibaldi fish in the California kelp forest or kelp forest off the Channel Islands. Interestingly, they're actually really territorial and have been known to kind of chase scuba divers off, um, which is pretty impressive for a, a tiny fish. It's also kind of funny. And so when I paint the fish, I start off by kind of tracing the fish and then filling it in with pigment and color, starting with the body and then creating the tail. The fish in the front should be a little bit bigger because it's closer to you. And I created one fish in the background. You can create a couple if you want, um, but they should be smaller because they're further away. And so now I'm gonna take um, this really dark black purple shimmery mica tone. Um, it's called Giant Sea Bass any black or purple will do and create this little purple urchin starting off with uh, drawing a little circle and then creating little spikes that come off of the circle and I'm going to paint this at the very bottom of the page um, so that it looks like it's sitting on the rocky reef right at the base of the kelp forest. When cleaning my brush, I'm going to take this color called Bonito, which is this pretty shimmery turquoise and getting a lot of pigment on the brush. I'm going to use this to kind of create a school of fish in the background because oftentimes you see schools of fish in kelp forest. So this school of fish is going to be in the background, kind of closer to the surface at the top of some of these kelp strands. And the school of fish is really kind of going to be like little quick wispy um, lines almost and just uh, like kind of stretched out ovals. And so I kind of randomly create these and clump them up uh, together so that they're not touching but they're close together. And I like to not paint over the kelp directly, but kind of underneath it or next to the kelp strands. Try following that gradient of color where it gets really light and you have color so that it looks like the fish just are swarming down. The fish I'm painting are not really uniform in size. Some are a little bit bigger, some are a little bit smaller, and I'm trying to simulate these fish traveling downwards and it kind of brings more motion into the painting. This school of fish is supposed to be in the background of the painting even though we're adding them last and so I try not to paint directly on some of those strands of kelp that are coming up in the front. So that's it for the watercolor painting part of the tutorial. It turned out really cute and you can see there's a ton of different ways you can paint the kelp forest using kind of the same process and same techniques. And so you can stop here if you just want a really pretty watercolor painting of the kelp forest. Um, but I wanted to make this a greeting card for Christmas. And so after letting the painting dry, I'm gonna keep the masking tape on until it's completely dry. I'm gonna go in and use a, I just used a gel pen, a kind of a pretty blue, 
and I'm going to write a short greeting at the top of this card, kind of closer to the surface where it's very light and doesn't kind of obscure the watercolor painting. Because we're using a gel pen, if you feel more comfortable, you can take a pencil and write out the short greeting first before um, using the gel pen, just in case um, you don't want to make a mistake. This way you're just tracing the pencil. And so I'm going to go ahead and write a greeting and I'm going to write, tis the season for season. Haha, <laughs> that's funny, right? Super cute. So I didn't really like that gel pen, so I'm going to go find another one. And I'm going to make sure my painting is really dry so my gel pen doesn't bleed. I'm just kind of fanning it off right now. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this Kelp Forest watercolor greeting card tutorial. You can go ahead and take the masking tape off. A uh, quick tip, I like to kind of rip my tape off really slowly so I don't um, tear the paper in case it's really stuck on there. So now that you're done with this painting, you can use it to create a greeting card by keeping it as is, or you can get some kind of existing pre-made blank greeting cards that open up and using double-sided tape, you can mount this card to the front and write your kind of personal note inside, or you can just mount it on a piece of um, cardstock um, that you can get at the craft store or Michael's on Amazon. Um, and using double-sided tape, make it more of like a postcard. So there's a lot of different ways um, you can customize this into a greeting card, um, really just using cardstock and double-sided tape. Zooming into the card a bit and viewing it from different angles, you can really see how pretty those mica colors turned out. They really give it a nice Christmas kind of spirit and kind of shimmer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and follow me on Instagram at salty.soul.art and please post your creations. I would love to see them. Happy holidays.